morning, everyone. May I have your attention, please? Yeah. My name is Soyan Kim, um, also known as Stacy, which is my English name. Um, I work for Kirims, and I work as an administrative coordinator. So I welcome you to this third Asian WHO event and workshop. Uh, unfortunately, the weather is cloudy uh, today, and it will it will be rainy all for the rest of the workshop. So I'm sorry to <laughs> deliver you bad news, but actually at this time of the year in Korea, uh, the weather is really good which because it's spring. So I hope you enjoy um, the, this day in Korea while you participate in this workshop. So before we start our session, uh, we're going to have uh, com welcome addresses by our Director General, Dr. Jin, first. So. Good morning. It's formal ceremony, so I will read this address. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Let me introduce myself. My name is Young Jin, Director General of uh, NREMC of uh, Korea Institute of Radiological and the Medical Sciences. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming a long way uh, to attend this workshop. It's my great pleasure to welcome all participants from Asian countries and uh, lecturers as well. In particular, we appreciate the WHO support for this workshop. Uh, now I will introduce our organization first. Uh, the National Radiation Emergency Medical Center, NREMC in short, was uh, established in 2002 as a countermeasure for radiation emergencies. It operates uh, national medical preparedness and the response network with a primary and secondary designated hospital in each region. It also provides uh, education and the training for medical personnel and uh, first uh, responders to improve their capabilities. Based on these uh, experiences, Kiram's sports a global initiatives for strengthening medical preparedness and uh, response for radiation emergencies. As a WHO collaboration center and the IAEA capacity building center. While the first Asian WHO rampant workshop in 2015 and the second workshop in 2016 uh, discussed the post-Fukushima status of uh, each country uh, and uh, addressed the general topics of radiation emergency medicine. Uh, this year's workshop specifically focused on issues related to internal contamination. As a radiation disaster can transcend national borders and also exceed one country's capabilities. So international cooperation is important to improve and enhance safe globally. By exchanging past experience, and sharing new technological advances to improve the current status. I hope uh, that this workshop will provide not only updated information, but also opportunities to build international networks. Finally, as I wrap up my speech, I would like to wish you a wonderful stay in Korea. Uh, as you know, spring is the best time to visit Korea. And now is the perfect time, but raining today. <laughs> so <laughs> please enjoy yourselves. Uh, thank you. And let me bring Dr. Jana Carr of WHO Rampant for her welcome address. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to greet you here this morning. And uh, first of all, I want to express the utmost gratitude to the Kiram's hosts for supporting uh, this event for the third time already. We are gathering experts and uh, public health specialists in Asian countries uh, at Kiram's. 
and I, wish I should um, emphasize that emergency preparedness and response is uh, one of the priority areas for the World Health Organization. And as you know, there is uh, a very firm legal um, mandate WHO has to carry out under the international health regulations. International health regulations is an international law for those of, of you who are not familiar with that. All countries in the world are basically obliged to implement uh, the requirements under IHR. And IHR um, prescribes countries to have a set of national core capacities uh, to be able to address any health risks, any health emergencies, regardless of the uh, cause and origin. Um, international health regulations implementation is um, being rolled out uh, in four components, one of them being the annual uh, uh, preparedness monitoring when countries are reporting to WHO their status and the progress they have made. Um, the second uh, tool is uh, conducting external evaluation missions in countries when WHO sets up the teams of experts and countries are volunteering to uh, uh, host these missions and evaluations based on which recommendations are derived for strengthening countries' preparedness. The third component is to um, roll out systems of national exercises. And these are specifically addressing uh, to highlight the uh, existing gaps in the countries. And the fourth component is uh, deriving on the results of the annual monitoring of the JEE mission, Joint External Evaluation Mission, and on the results of the exercise, and to draw up the national action plans. Then these action plans are taken further to the donor community, and, and uh, spe specific uh, activities are developed to implement these action plans. So this program of implementing international health regulations then circulates in, on a five-year basis uh, when uh, progress will be measured and then the cycle repeats. Um, in order to implement our responsibilities under the international health regulations, WHO has set up a global um, experts networks in different fields and different networks. For radiological and nuclear emergencies, the key technical expertise arm of the WHO is Radiation Emergencies Medical Preparedness and Assistance Network, abbreviated as RAMPAN. RAMPAN today uh, unites more than 40 uh, specialized centers around the world, and basically we rely uh, quite heavily on these experts for supporting WHO activities in the regions. And I'm very happy to say that in the Asian region, uh, both uh, North... Uh, um, I wanted to mention uh, the key contributors in the uh, radiation program in, in the Asian region are Japan and, and Korea. And uh, notably there we have collaborating centers and Kirams became a WHO collaborating center uh, last um, summer in July, I believe. Uh, so uh, this new center basically uh, is very active and uh, this actually uh, annual, uh, annual regional workshops are very, very important for uh, implementing uh, WHO's tasks and activities and strengthening regional capacities in the Asian countries. Um, I also would like to mention that uh, this specific topic of internal contamination with radionuclides was selected with the view of WHO's uh, planning uh, to develop uh, clinical guidelines for decorporation treatment. And so because uh, I'm personally a, a radiation oncologist by um, training. Uh, I'm not a toxicologist, so internal contamination is for me is uh, also not a very clear topic. Uh, I rely on experts uh, as yourself, as uh, Chun Sheng, for example, Dr. Akashi, who are uh, always happy and ready to support WHO when we need technical advice. But for me, it's also a very good opportunity to learn more about the subject. And this is something which is, uh, let's say, a boutique area where we don't have actually broadly available expertise worldwide on internal contamination management, on monitoring and, and, and on treatment of this condition, but it is a clinical condition. It can arrive uh, due to a specific uh, type of uh, radiological nuclear emergencies, and we need to know how to manage that. So with that, um, I should also mention that uh, the presentations and lectures will be recorded. So if uh, some of you are here attending uh, without telling your boss or your wife, 
<laughs> if you don't want to be on the video, put your sunglasses. <laughs> um, well, we'll start. Thank you very much. Okay, so to, uh, before we start our session, is I think it's good to break the ice by introducing uh, each participant. So actually, the time is a little limited, so I, want, I would like you to keep it short. So I'll pass this mic. Me? Um, good morning. Um, I'm Makoto Akashiwati at National Institute of Radiological Sciences in Japan. I'm, uh, my major is radiation emergency medicine. Today, I'd like to uh, tomorrow, I'd like to introduce the internal contamination, how to treat a patient who are expo uh, in internally contaminated radionuclides. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Chen Sheng Li uh, from Health Canada, but my originally from somewhere not too far from here. My hometown is Shandong province in China, which is some about 500 kilometers from here. Uh, yeah, my, my major work in Health Canada is on internal contamination. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, two projects on the monitoring of dosimetry. Uh, tomorrow we'll share um, uh, two projects on decorporation. Yeah, thank you, bye. No. Well, I already introduced myself. <laughs> I just uh, add that I'm a radiation oncologist by training, originally from Kazakhstan, and I've been working for WHO since 2002 in the area of radiation emergency preparedness and response. Nice to meet you all. Uh, my name is Osamu Kurihara. I'm working for uh, QST and IRS, uh, same as Akashi. So I'll present the uh, um, lecture about the uh, ALDOS, so Asian Radiation Documentary Network, so the uh, well, very brand new uh, network system for uh, Asian countries. And also uh, next day, so I will talk about the uh, Fukushima experiences. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Kotaro Tani from NIRS. And then uh, I'm uh, been working the study of uh, internal dose assessment. So I'm very looking forward to hear the uh, lectures. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Wiho Ha, working at uh, Kirams as a chief of laboratory of health physics. Uh, today I will have a two talk about uh, ICRP biokinetic and dosimetric model, and the other one is uh, thyroid uh, monitoring intercomparison exercise we have had yet last year uh, within uh, Arado's Asian radiation dosimetry group. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Tian Guan, and uh, I'm researching uh, about the internal dosimetry. Uh, uh, dosimetry for the internet exposure, and I'm going tomorrow. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna make a presentation about uh, dosimetry, internal dosimetry methodology, uh, about the accident that happened last year in Korea. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Hai Kam Kyo Kyan Chan, uh, from Ministry of Health, Department of Communicable Disease Control, Lao PDR. Uh, today is very good opportunity to attend this uh, workshop because in my country just uh, start use uh, radiotherapy in the last year. We have no experience from uh, contamination uh, with radionuclear. Thank you. Hello, I'm Han Song Kim and I work, work for Kirams as a researcher and my research field is uh, Monte Carlo simulation with computational human phantoms and so I'm going to make a presentation about uh, computational human phantoms today and so nice to meet you hey, Good morning, my name is Jerong Yu in, in a senior, senior researcher in Kirams uh, Today morning I will talk about radiation basics so nice to meet you again Thank you 
Good morning, uh, Richard Balaram from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I'm actually the Secretariat of the Global Health Security Initiative Radnuke Working Group. So, thank you for having us here and, and allowing me to listen. Uh, hi, I'm Geraldine. I'm from Singapore uh, DSO, uh, which is in Defense Science. Um, I'm a medical physicist by training, but currently doing research in health physics. I'm just here to learn. <laughs> Thanks. Good morning. My name is Lashini Gon uh, from Ministry of Health, Thailand. Good morning. My name is uh, Kawin Sia Upad from Thailand. My basic is uh, emergency physician and clinical toxicologist. Good morning. Uh, I'm Atsushi Kumagai from Fukushima Medical University of Japan. So my me measure is now... now We would like to discuss uh, about uh, uh, many issues in this uh, workshop here. So, thank you. I'm Yoichiro Hosokawa from Hir Hirosaki University in Japan. Uh, I'm, I'm measuring in the radiation emergency medicine and the radiation therapy technique. And I'm glad to meet you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Minoru Osanai from Hirosaki University in Japan. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Tomisato Mirua. I'm working in Hirosaki University in Japan. And my major is uh, Cytronic Biodosimetry. Um, yesterday, we participated in a well-designed uh, radiation medicine training course in Kiramas. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, my name is Suyan Ban. I'm just come from the Armed, Armed Hospital. Uh, we are a member of the Radiation Emergency Center, so we are a medical team. I am Captain Ban and she is, he is Master, Master Surgeon Moon and he is Warrant Officer Bak. So we are not present here, but we are really expecting to participate in, in here, so thank you. Everyone, uh, I am Sokwon Yoon. I'm a lecturer of uh, internal dosimetry, internal contamination monitoring. And I'm very happy to meet you all, and I hope you're enjoying this workshop. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Kim Moon Sung. I'm a senior researcher in low dose risk assessment teams at NREMC. So I'm so Happy to be here. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Kotetsu Naka. I'm from Japan. Uh, I work in Hirosaki University as nurse. And I uh, advance uh, radiation emergency medicine. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Kanako Hayama. I'm a nurse. I work at the uh, hospital ward uh, section of and IRS. Yes, uh, I'm studying uh, for to be C uh, radiation CNS uh, at Hirosaki University. Thank you. And so, uh, working on radiation epidemiology in the key arms. So thank you all. Nice to meeting you. Good morning, everyone. This is Ha Jung Gung, and welcome to Korea. I came from KHMP Radiation Health Institute. And KHMP is the only nuclear power plant operating company in Korea. And especially, I am working in the field of radiation emergency medical part of, of for the nuclear power plant accident. Thank you. 
Good morning. My name is Chi Young Kim, and I work in KHMP Radiation Research Institute. And I'm a radiation biologist, and my research field is low dose radiation. Yeah, thank you. Nice to meet you. Good morning. Yes, I'm uh, Uni Hong, and I'm a researcher um, of. KHMP, and I usually evaluate the health effect of a nuclear power plant worker, and I do biological dosimetry, so uh, nice to meet you too. Thank you. Yes, good morning. My name is Susilo Widodo, call me Susilo, uh, from National Nuclear, uh, Nuclear Energy Agency of Indonesia. My, I am a researcher now in the radiation measurement, and uh, I come here need to refresh and update my knowledge in the EPR, especially in the internal dosimetry. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Gia from WHO office in Vietnam. I'm technical officer in charge of environmental health. And uh, I used to work for Vietnam, Vietnam Atomic Energy Commission. So I have a, I'm very interested in the learning the, the topic of the workshop today. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Hong. I work in uh, Health Environment Management Agency, uh, Ministry of Health of, of Vietnam. I uh, am uh, happy in here, and thank you. Good morning. My name is Naoko Fukuda. Uh, I came from Nagasaki University Atomic Bomb Disease Institute. My work is uh, management and operation of the whole body counter. Uh, I'm very be honored to be to be, be able to part participate in this uh, workshop. Thank you very much. Good morning, dear colleagues. My name is Sergei Alexanin. I am a director of all Russia. Nikiforov uh, Center of Emergency and Radiation Medicine in St. Petersburg. Uh, I hope the topic terms of this workshop uh, will be interest for specialists of radiation medicine. Last July, we accept the delegation from Kerams, and I hope uh, for uh, collaboration with this uh, center in uh, framework Rampan centers. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Paul. Okay, before starting the session one, I will uh, give you a general information on the third lamp meeting very shortly. Okay, my name is Park, and I'm working for the Kiramps as the international coordinator. Okay, the every the meeting will be start at 9 a.m., so you have to show up at least 10 minutes before the scheduled time. And uh, every participant will be provided uh, a lunch box on May 15, uh, sorry, 16, and the breakfast during your stay in the hotel. Also, in principle, camps do not support uh, transportation service between the airport to the hotel. So I hope you can understand that these are our policies. Um, on May 18, uh, on May 18, on Friday, our chartered bus will be here to pick you up. Uh, for the Kiram site visit. Also, if you want to receive the, our old presentation piles, uh, Mr. Stacy will give you all presentation piles by email. So please let me or Ms. Stacy know that. Also, the South Korea is uh, extremely safe for anyone to visit. <laughs> no guns, no nuke, no wars between the North and South Korea. So do not worry about that. Okay, so if you need any assistance, our the administrative coordinator will help you. So, Ms. Stacy? Okay, Ms. Stacy and I will help you. Okay, Ms. Teresa? I'm sorry. Okay, anyway, our administrative coordinator will help you, so please let me know if you are in any troubles. Thank you. Uh, se the session one is will be started with uh, Dr. 
Jeryong used a presentation price. Please make a big applause to him. Oh, nice to meet you again. Uh, this is to time the greeting in the morning. Uh, actually, in the radiation emergency, it is really important to understand what kind of radio nuclide was involved. Actually, this is basic concept. Uh, maybe I, I think that everybody knows that uh, what kind of radiation or what is the radiation type or something like that. However, just that is kind of the reminding of your concept. So the topic is radiation basics, those quantities and exposure pathway of after radiological and nuclear accidents. The lecture was is consists of like this, the radiation basics and uh, those quantities. Also, the exposure pathway will be lastly. Actually, in here, the dose quantities has really so many kind of the, the quantities. As you can see, observable dose or equivalent dose or effective dose like that. And first time, I will uh, have, I will give you a definition of the what what is the dose quantities, and and then I will explain. What, what is the system of the each other? Oh uh, yeah, I think the radioactivity is a fundamental matter, a property of the matter. So uh, the everything or every radio nuclide emitter radiation, especially the radiation could be alpha, beta, or gamma ray, or sometimes the, the neutron could be also. Uh, and the uh, radioactivity, radioactive nuclide, we can say that it is radionuclide emitter radiation. Uh, actually, the radiation has the ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. Normally, we understand the radiation is the ionizing radiation, normally. So, uh, the radiation emitter can be particulate or electromagnetic wave forms. I think everybody knows that the particulate form of the radiation is the alpha or beta or neutron could be. And also electromagnetic wave form could be gamma ray or x-ray, something like that. Yeah, the radiation. Radiation is everywhere. So, and also the radiativity is a natural phenomenon. Uh, and there are two kinds of the radiation. There is the natural background radiation and man-made radiation sources. As you know, the cosmic radiation from the universe, and also the terrestrial radiation from the Earth. We're living in the house or living in God, the building. And also internal radiation. Do you know what is the internal radiation? Have you ever think about that? Uh, sorry, just uh, my lecture has some kind of question. Don't worry about that, just I will give you an answer. Like, anyway, the internal radiation, normally we have, or, or the everybody has their own radionuclide, that is potassium poly. Do you know that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, potassium poly has the homeostatic function to the human bodies. So everybody or every human ha have to their own potassium amount. So uh, can you guess how much of the potassium poly in the human body, especially the female or male? Yeah, yeah, today the, the, the first time, so Nobody had the, uh, any, anyway, any, anyway, I will say to you, the, for the female, the potassium poly could be ob over 2,500 becquerel, or for male, over 3,500 becquerel. Everybody have their own <coughs> potassium. And also, e uh, every day and every time, everybody could be exposed by themselves. There is the internal exposure and then, all people are exposed by cosmic ray or terrestrial ray or internal, internal radiation. And also man-made radiation. We say that is the artificial radiation. So the, in here, uh, artificial radi radioactive material could be used in the medicine, industries, and research, and education, or sometimes the military field. And so there are three distinct groups to groups of the exposed, that is occupationally exposed and medically exposed and, uh, and also members of public. In the radiation emergency or radiation workers have, have to work in the radiation environment, that is the occupational exposed. And also medically exposed, the patient ha will have the diagnosis or the treatment. Uh, for example, there is CT or the X-ray or something like that. 
and also members of the public could be uh, exposed by the artificial radiation. This is really basic. Maybe we can see this figure in the elementary uh, the, the middle school, maybe nowadays. The atom consists of like this. The, the positron and neutron and electrons, that is really basic. The atomic structure, st structure is consists of like these three components. Also, the unstable radioactive material emit radiation. As I mentioned before, the radiation has the particulate form or electromagnetic waves form. That is the radiation. Or sometimes we can say the radiation is the type or form of the energy transformation. Yeah, this is also really basic slide. There is nuclide. We say that is the, the nuclide, you can express the, the mass number and atomic number, also neutron number. Uh, the mass number, mass number is the, the sum of atomic number and neutron number. Everybody knows that, I think. Uh, the atomic number is same as the electron number. Uh, normally, the isotope has the different atomic mass. However, the same atomic number means like here. That is example for isotope for carbon or iodine or uranium. There are so many isotopes in the world. Uh, as I mentioned before, that it, this is really basic concept of the radiation and uh, those quantity or something like that. This is the, the definition of the radiation and the radioactivity. The radiation is the emission or transmission of the energy. That is kind of the and the form of waves or particle, particulate form and through the material medium. In here, the radiation could be ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation, as I, as I mentioned before. Uh, normally, we, we will talk about the uh, radiation is, will be ionizing radiation. Also, in here, uh, the right could be radiation, but not quite much energy or not harmful. And the radioactivity is the capacity of the radiation. That is the number of dis interaction or transformations occurring in the radioactive material in a given period of time. So the radioactive material has their own half-life. And, so, and the radioactivity or radiation could be emit in a specific time. So this is the radioactive meaning. So the basic unit of the radioactivity is a background. That is the DPS is based on the second. That is basic concept of radioactivity. Yeah, as I mentioned before, there are two kinds of radiation. That is non-ionizing radiation and ionizing radiation. Normally, the non-ionizing radiation is not considered to take radiation because the traditionally, the perceived as a harmfulness due to its lack of the capacity to the, the harmless or human bodies. So uh, normally, the non-ionizing radiation is not considered the, the dangerous something or like that. Uh, in a ra ionizing radiation, that, is can't, that cause uh, cellular and uh, or DNA damage with prolonged exposure. That is, could be external exposure or internal exposure could be. X-ray or the gamma ray or the, it could be the ionizing radiation. Actually, the ionizing radiation, ionizing radiation is the transfer, the energy to the medium, means the medium could be human body in, the, in this case. So the energy of the any radiation can be transferred to matter, means the, if the radiation source is outside of the body, it can, the, the energy transferred to the body. That situation is exposure, okay? And the types of radiation capable of producing ionized matter are collectively for the ionizing radiation means. And also, uh, that is really repeated and repeated, means I, I said the radiation, ionizing radiation form is the electromagnetic waves and the particulate form. It is, it is repeatedly, however, just I will say to again, the waves form is gamma ray or X-ray. And also, particulate form of radiation is alpha, beta, or neutron. And uh, there are the ionizing radiation. Also, there are 
the other classification means the the radiation classified the ionizing and non-ionizing radiation, and also ionizing radiation classified direct ionizing ionizing radiation and indirect ionizing radiation. Normally, the alpha particle or beta particle and proton is the direct ionizing radiation because that is charged particles and uh, it produces a large amount of ionizing radiation in its energy or to the medium. And on the other hand, the gamma ray or X-ray or neutron has no charge. That is indirect ionizing radiation. The indirect ionizing radiation is neutral particle, has no electrical charge. So uh, it could it could not produce the high amount of the ion pairs that is indirect ionizing radiation. However, the direct ionizing radiation and the indirect ionizing radiation also have the dangerous to the human body or it kind of the effect to the human body. Uh, normally, uh, the, in the particulate form of the radiation, in their alpha particle or beta particle, in a uh, the unstable radium nuclide can emit the, ra emit the radi radiation that is the partic particulate form of the radiation and then it going to the stable state that is beta decay and also alpha decay. In here, the beta decay has two types of beta decay, beta minus and beta plus. They are the same as the uh, electron, however the, the electrical charge is different, so there is beta minus and beta plus. And also alpha decay. You know, yeah, I think there is really, really basic concept. What is the alpha particle? Do you know that? Maybe I think everybody knows that. There's a helium. The helium. Helium is the two proton and two neutron was bounded together. Really heavy and really, really have big energy. So it can to transfer really, really high energy to the medium. So I will explain the gamma ray and beta ray and alpha ray. In here, the gamma ray has no electrical charge, so it can go through the wrong distance. That means wrong range, because the gamma ray cannot interact with the other material, especially not on the electron charge anyway. And so it can go in through the long distance, and uh, in the case of the, the radio radioactive material which emits the, the gamma ray, is outside of, the, outside of the body, it is really dangerous to the human body because the, the radiation could leach to them. And also, uh, therefore, the externally hazard. By the way, is that uh, if the, the gamma ray is inside the body, is that dangerous or not dangerous? Also dangerous. Yeah, there is special not, not specially uh, the external, just the only also gamma ray uh, hazard to the external and internal contamination. So the gamma ray can penetrate the material. So if the, the radionuclide inside of the body at the time, we can measure out of outside of the body. So that is characteristic of the gamma ray. However, the beta and alpha ray is a little bit different. They have the electrical charge, and also uh, these two particles has a little bit short range, means it cannot move long distance. So uh, in the case of the nuclide uh, which emit alpha ray or alpha or beta particle at the time, it is not harmful to the human body. But in here, the beta ray, also beta ray could be dangerous for the contact skin, only beta ray. But Alpha ray is a little bit different. Alpha ray is really seriously injured to the human body in the case of the in the case of internal contamination. So they, this is a different point. And uh, by the way, this is this is also question. Can we measure the beta ray or alpha ray? If if the beta ray are, uh, beta and alpha ray in the inside of the body at the time, can we measure the radiation? from the ex external of the human body? Is that possible? No, yeah, yeah. This is impossible because they has a really, really short range, that is reason. Yeah, this is the basic also. 
Yeah, people I said the alpha particle and beta particle has electrical charge and this range is really short. So the alpha particle cannot trans to penetrate the, the skin. So even though there is the alpha, alpha particle, uh, the radionuclide which emit the alpha particle is outside of the body, it is no, there is no matter. It's not dangerous. However, the beta particle could be serious problem in the contact skin. That is meaning. And also, gamma ray could penetrate everything. However, cannot penetrate lead. Why? Why the the shielding material choose the like uh, the lead or something like that? Why the lead the shielding the radiation, especially for the gamma ray or the X-ray, because high electron density. Normally, the gamma ray interact with the material that is the photoelectric effect or ion pro ion a pair pro pair production and the Compton schedule or something like that. So the lead has so many ions, uh, so many electrons. So the, if the gamma ray going to the lead at the time, the other the electron have the interact with the uh, there are the probability will arise the interact with the, the radiation and the uh, uh, electron. That is the reason why we use the shielding for the gamma ray using the lead. And also the neutron is totally different from the other radiation. The neutron, do you know the, the mass of how much of our, how much of the neutron mass, do you know? Just one. So it can penetrate. And also the neutron has no electrical charge, so it can penetrate everything. However, in the concrete or in the water, they can stop. Because the neutron can interact uh, the scattered electric el elastic scattering or non-elastic scattering, and then there, are, there could be hydrogen, the same mass of the neutron, so it can stop right here. That is the reason why we use that concrete or water could be the good shielding for the neutron. Yeah, half-life. Yeah, the half-life is the time required for the given activity to decrease by one half of its current activity means the some radionuclide have the, their own activity and then after the specific time, the activity could be decreased in half. There are three kinds of the half-life, the physical half-life, as you can see, and biological half-life, and also effective half-life. Normally, the half-life, we, we say the health piece, as I, as I health piece, we say the half-life is the just the physical half-life. However, for the committed effective dose calculation, at the time, we should use the effective half-life. Maybe I think that, I think the, the, the biological half-life, maybe I think everybody knows, under, understand the biological half-life. And this is the example for the subspecific radionuclide has their own half-life. Yeah, this is figure to understand what is the radioactive material and what is radiation and what is radi radioactive material. Means, uh, think about the bird in the in the you know side of the, our head. Uh, the bird is the radioactive material just itself and. The right from the right from the bulb is the radiation, and how bright the how bright the light is the radioactivity. That is capacity. Just think about that, and then it is is to way to understand what is radiation or something like that. Uh, yeah, the every uh, the radiation is everywhere and every time and every body. You price that. So we are all exposed to the radiation every day or every, everywhere. So uh, there is the reason the back, uh, terrestrial radiation or radioactivity from the food. So it can the uh, it can influence by the human bodies. Also, the cosmic radiation for the the aircraft the uh, the airplane the crew, and also or sometimes we have the air travel using the airplane. At the time, we we can we have we can have the exposure to the from the universe. There is cosmic radiation. And normally, uh, do you know the how many exposed dose is in a 
ordinary situation in a year. There is 2.4 millisieverts per year. There is normal situation. However, in specific area of the Brazil like this, it's quite high dose. And also, the X-ray is really small amount of the dose. However, the CT could be really high dose to the human body. So nowadays, it is really, really, uh, the people concerned about uh, the CT is really dangerous sometimes. And also, interestingly, in here, the eating one banana for the, the whole day for one year that could be exposed to the human body is, is 36 microsieverts. It's really interesting. So maybe, uh, yeah, I, I have the kind of the experience that the, in YouTube, there are some interesting the video was that uh, how much those was the, from the x-ray compared with the banana eating something like that. It's really interesting. Just we, we should, you can find that. Yeah, those quantities, there are so many kind of the those quantities, observable dose, equivalent dose, and also effective dose or something like that. Uh, before the, the quantity, uh, before the dose quantity, I will show you the what is the quantity means. The quantities, when used for quantitative description of physical phenomena or object, are generally called the physical quantities. In here, in radiation protection, the observable dose is basic physical quantity. And also, the effective dose and equivalent dose is derived quantities, is that the work the derived from the set of base quantities, base quantities and resulting quantities are called, we said, derived quantities. So I will introduce the quantity for the, radi the radiation protection, that is the observable dose, equivalent and effective dose. Yeah, in here, sometimes it is really the complicated the concept. However, I will summarize. I hope that could be under the, the help to understand the what is the dose or something like that. In here, uh, normally we said that is the base quantity is the absorbed dose and equivalent dose. Equivalent dose need radiation weighting factors. And also, effective dose is used to uh, considering the tissue weighting factors or something like that. This is a system of dose quantities for uh, using radiological protection. Yeah, this is the basic quantities and it need patterns models and the individual information at higher doses and then make the mean absorbed dose. And also the equivalent dose requiring the, requiring the radiation weighting factors and then it could consider the, the what kind of the radiation or how, imp how about the, uh, what about the impact of the radiation that is the equivalent dose also the considering the tissue rating factor is the effective dose. Normally we said the dose is the effective dose normally. However, in the radiation emergency, do you know what kind of the dose will be used? There are no information what kind of radiation, there are no information of what kind of the tissue was exposed. So in a radiation accident, in ex especially, especially in external exposure, there should be just observed dose, gray. That is mean, because there are no information. As I mentioned before, the observed dose is the basic qu dose quantities. And also, the, the unit is joule per kilogram. And the special name is gray, we say. We, we can distinguish what kind of the, the of dose. In here, the absorbed dose is defined as a quotient of energy and uh, mass. That is the mean energy imparted to matter of the mass the by ionizing radiation. That is the absorbed dose. In here, the four low doses a little bit deeper on the point. The absorbed dose cannot cover the everything. So there will need the averaging dose. So basis for the definition of the protection quantities which are used for limiting stochastic effect at low doses. And also, the averaging dose is the based on the linear nose threshold. 
the model and therefore all of the addition dose resulting from external and internal exposure. That is the average of those. It is a little bit the complicated concept of the dose, so that has the two or uh, three slides of the averaging dose. The averaging dose is carried out, carry out over the mass of a specified organ or tissue or sensitive region of tissue. So uh, it, need, it requires the radiation weighting factors. And also uh, for the external radiation, the representativeness of mean dose is different from observed dose, as I mentioned before. So uh, the, the homogeneity of the exposure or low penetration or limited range or widely distributed tissue and organs is uh, limited, cannot, dis uh, cannot uh, distribute the homogeneity. And the range of the radiation incident on the body, that is uh, in the extreme partial body exposure, for, for example, in the, the feet or the hand, at the time, it cannot, it cannot compare with the whole body exposure. So there it, quite, it is required a special limit on the local skin, not the whole body exposure. There is a little bit different point. And also for internal emitters, this, uh, before I said that is, there was the external exposure. In here, this is internal exposure. In this case, it depends on the penetration and range of the emitter emitted radiation. Means the some radionuclide inside of the body it emits radiation. However, the radiation, the, the range of radiation is really short. At the time, the radiation cannot impact to the other organ or tissue. That there was the heterogeneous situation. So the radionuclide means the sometimes in here the alpha particle or soft beta particle or low energy photon or all the electrons has the short range. So it may be highly heterogeneous. That is uh, localized means. And this heterogeneity applies in the particular to radionuclide in the respiratory and the elementary systems. It localized the, the exposure. Yeah, this is the uh, radiation weighting factor. The figure means the alpha, uh, gamma, and the gamma and beta ray has same impact in the human body, to the human body. As you can see, the a, a little bit bold line. There is a big impact to the human body. That is the, the it, it reflects the higher biological effectiveness of high LT and uh, low LT. In use to, to drive the, the equivalent dose from the observable dose every over tissue or organ before I said. So for equivalent dose calculation, the radiation weighting factor is used. This is compared with the uh, radiation weighting factors, compared with the ICLP60, and this is a little bit long times ago, and this is a little bit short times ago anyway. The radiation weighting factor was a little bit changed. In here, the proton was changed 5 to 2. The most interestingly, the neutron was changed, means, uh, as you can see, this is the, the this ra radiation weighting factor of the neutron is the step function depends on the energy. However, as you can see in here, this is the continuous function depends on the energy. That is the different point of the neutron. Now for the equivalent dose, uh, as I might mentioned before, the based on the observable dose and then uh, the radiation weighting factor was the, the considered, and then we can calculate the equivalent dose. The equivalent dose is used for protection quantities. And also, it also stochastic health effect is kept below unacceptable levels. And also, tissue reactions are avoided, means just it, uh, it considered the radiation weighting factor, not tissue or something like that. So it need the tissue weighting factor, okay? So, uh, and also the unit of the equivalent dose is joule per kilogram. The, the special name is Siebert, or a little bit uh, different from the absorbed dose. 
the observ uh, the, the special name of the observed dose is grain. And from now, the equivalent dose, the, the special name of the equivalent dose is a sieverant. Yeah, this is the figure of the tissue rating factors. As you can see, uh, each organ or each, each tissue has the different rating factors, means there is radio sensitivity. What kind of the tissue or what kind of the organ is the sensitive to the radiation exposure? That is meaning. Uh, the, the tissue rating factor is the relative contribution of the tissue or organ to the total health determinant resulting from uniform irradiation of the body means that also right here. And yeah, can you guess how, how, how about the sum of the total radiation a uh, total tissue rating factor. How much of the total, a uh, total tissue rating factor? Is that, ah, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> really, thank you, yeah, right. <laughs> Do you know why? why? Why this is one? All tissue and all organ composed to the human body, full body, so there is one. There is just it, one meaning is just one man. Yeah, this is compared of the, the, the tissue rating factor compared with the ICLP and ICLP-60 ICLP and ICLP-103. There are a little bit changes. Uh, for example, the gonad was the decreased right here. And also, the most important thing is the reminder tissue was changed. Okay, yeah, that is a different point. Uh, as you can see, uh, in here, for the calculation of the effective dose at the time, we need we need the uh, average equivalent dose. At the time, we need the reference person because the human, human maybe there are the female or male. So the male, the organ of the female and the male is a little bit different. So they need the average, the average, the, the reference person. Also, this, this meaning is reminder organ of reminder tissue of the male and female. So that is the, the system, the diagram of the effective dose from the, the absorbed dose. Yeah, as I mentioned before, the absorbed dose and the equivalent dose, and this is the effective dose. Lastly, thank God. Anyway, uh, yeah, effective dose is central quantity in the radiological protection. Yeah, in here, that is the important thing, tissue weighting factor. Before I said the uh, equivalent dose cannot consider the tissue weighting factor. So uh, this is the, uh, it, the effective dose can consider the tissue weighting factor, and also it provides a practical approach to the management of the radiation risk. Also, it can be calculated from the absorbed dose and then equivalent dose and effective dose will be calculated. However, it cannot measure. That is really important thing. In here, uh, the absorbed dose could be measured. However, equivalent dose and effective dose is not measured directly. It just only calculated from the base quantity. This is the different quantity for the external exposure. Uh, however, the absorbed dose is on just only the base quantity, that is start line of the dose. In here, the effective dose or equivalent dose is for protection quantities. However, in here, the operation operational quantities for the measurement and assessment of the dose in the body, I mean, in operational dose quantity could be measured. That is totally different point compared with the effective or equivalent dose. And in here, uh, for the operational quantities, there are for external exposure and internal exposure. <coughs> and this is the relationship among physical and protection and operational external radiation dosimeter quantities. As I mentioned before, the absorbed dose is a physical and basic quantities. And also, for protection quantities are equivalent and effective dose. And as I mentioned before, that the operational quantities, there are personal dose equivalents. We say that is HP10 or something like that. 
Yeah, just I will say to you the HP, that is personal source equivalent, not in here, because uh, also these two components could be measured directly. However, for the occupational exposure dose in here, the individual monitoring is the needed. It is required. Uh, so for the individual monitoring, the personal dose equivalent is for control of effective dose. That is the reason why I skip the other things. It's really, uh, yeah, really so many the character anyway. I will explain the D means the depth. That is important thing. The HP10 means the total human body for the effective dose. And also the point 07 means the skin for the feet or hands. And for three is for the range of eyes. That is depth of the organ or tissues. That is really meaning. However, the personal dose equivalent cannot, cannot appropriately assess effective dose because, or, and also in case of partial body exposure, it cannot cover the whole body exposure. So in this case, the radiation workers use the ring dosimeter or something like that that could be reflect the uh, partial body exposure. Maybe I think that, I, I think everybody knows that uh, HP 10 plus committed effective dose is the, for the occupational exposure dose, there are external exposure and internal exposure. The e occupational exposure dose is the sum of internal and expo external dose. For the external exposure dose is a personal dose equivalent and also internal for the internal exposure dose is committed effective dose. You know what is the meaning of the fifty? Oh. Fifty years. How about the adolescents? Until sixty uh, seventy years old. A little bit different point. Anyway, that is the reason why the that is not depth, okay? That is depth and that is age. I don't know the year, anyway. Yeah, this is maybe last part of the, this lecture. It, yeah, I, maybe I, I have just uh, 10 minutes. I will briefly explain to you. Uh, in the radi radiological and the nuclear accident at the time, there are internal exposure, it could be, and also external exposure and inter external contamination. Do you know why? The internal exposure and internal contamination is the same. Do you know why? Yeah, in the morning, the first time is really hard to the lecture because <laughs> there are no answer. Anyway, uh, in here, well, for the internal con internal exposure, the radionuclide have to inside of the body. So the internal exposure is internal contamination is same meaning. That is the reason. And also, the pathway of the internal exposure is inhalation or ingestion, or sometimes ejection, or sometimes absorption from the wound, or something like that. Also, that is the, the external or internal, external contamination means. That this, the figure is internal contamination. As you can see, the radionuclide could into the human body, just to into the human body, the, through the inhalation route or through the elementary root, like a mouth or something like that. There is different point of the external contamination. Just there is the contaminated the surface, like a dust or something like that. There is external contamination. Also, it, the external exposure could be occur in this case. Uh, for the internal exposure, the internal exposure, uh, as I mentioned before, the sun radionuclide into the human body. So the exposure to the radiation from the source within the body means the sun radionuclide into the body by the inhalation or ingestion or something like that. The internal contamination manifests as an uh, intake of radionuclide, the, the radioactive material into the body before I said the uh, ingestion, inhalation or something like that. So there are so many pathways. Also, uh, in need, the, for the, the dose assessment, uh, for the intake of the radionuclide, that is generally applied the uh, calculation of the intake. However, in here, uh, 
there are the surface pied uh, measurement method for the direct measurement or indirect measurement method. Uh, in the next lecture, Mr. Yoon will introduce the direct measurement method or the indirect measurement method. Yeah, this is concept of internal exposure. This is, I think, just in my opinion, it's really interesting, but uh, yeah, I'm afraid of the, this other persons anyway. Yeah, this is the three concept. Means the radionuclides into the body is intake. And intake the radionuclide dissolved by extracellular fluid that is uptake. And so the uptake radionuclide is going to organ and tissue in the in organ or in tissue is deposition. That is the concept of internal exposure. So this is, I think that is the, this is last question for you. Uh, how about the genome 133? Is that uh, if some, some person inhalate the genome 133, the gas type, is that internal contamination or external exposure? There are just the two options, internal contamination or external exposure. What is the answer? Yeah, just I will have, I will <laughs> make answer. Uh, the genome 133 is noble gas. So it cannot, uh, even though that in, into the human body, the, through the, 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 the inhalation, however, it cannot react with the extracellular fluid. So this is not internal exposure. This is external exposure, a little different meaning. Even though there is into the human body, but the other uptake and deposition, uh, there is no uptake, there is no deposition. So this is the external exposure. Uh, here, the, for the inhalation, is the directly going to the air, from the air. There is the direct inhalation during cloud passage, or sometimes the dust, like a dust, could be with suspension in a on the dry and the dusty conditions. At the time, it could be going to the offside and then going to the human body. That is inhalation. It is, is really important thing. And this is the introduction, introduction to human laparoscopic tract model. Uh, Dr. Ha will introduce what is the inhalation or ingestion and the, how what is the laparoscopic tract model. This is introduction. Just just remind. Uh, in the radiological and the re nuclear accident at the time, the consumption of the contaminated food, milk, or water, it could be. Also, uh, it's really easy to contaminate the food to levels exceeding those alone. However, as soon as, soon as possible to protect actions are implement implemented at the time, it is difficult to cause serious injuries. I mean, it's really important to, important to the protective action implementation means the blocking the inoculation or blocking the ingestion from the nature or from the environment in the radiation emergencies. There is also introduction of the human element of strength model. As you can see, the some radionuclide going to the human body, to the mouth, and then going to everywhere and going out, either the feces or the urine. The doctor will the explain specifically. And here, uh, for the protection against the internal exposure, this really simple way, just block. Block. That means uh, no eating or drinking or no smoking in the radiation emergency situation thing. And also, the keep hands away from mouth. It's really important things. In the radiation emergency, some guys can have to touch their mouth. That is really, sometimes a really bad habit. Uh, and then the, the contaminated material going to the mouth. That is root for the root of the uh, ingestion or in inhalation. And also uh, wearing proper protective equipment. In the radiation emergency, medical staff wearing the protective gear. There is meaning why, why they wear the protective gear. And this is the external exposure. I have maybe two or three slides, just, yeah, just five minutes anyway. Uh, in here, uh, when somebody is exposed to the radiation, there is no transfer or radioactive material. There is the 
important thing of the external exposure. Uh, when I visit the uh, NIRS, maybe long times ago, I mean six or five years ago, at the time, uh, Dr. Akashi explained to me uh, the external exposure and in external exposure and exter external contamination is uh, the different meaning. However, uh, if some person exposed by the externally, is that the radiation from the from the, the victims? Or I mean, the, if some some person exposed, the the human can uh, the radiation uh, human can emit radiation or not? Possible is can is a human emit radiation? <laughs> no. I mean normally, uh, in the exposure in the external exposure, there are no radiation emit from the victims. However, there are just one case is di the di different things. It's a neutral exposure. Normally, the alpha or beta or gamma ray uh, exposed by alpha or beta gamma ray is there are no impact to the the, the emit radiation from the victims. But the neutron in the in the case of neutron is a little bit different point. Also, in here the external exposure, uh, yeah, as you can see, that is really really small source. However, the activity is quite high, so the physically small source can cause serious injuries. There is the localized uh, injury, as you can see. There is a really serious problem in human body. Also, it also could be directly contact the, the radiation source. And the source can easily can be detected with a common instrument means the normally the sealed source is used the radiation, which is the gamma ray or beta ray. So it can be easily detected. Also, the external contamination is not just uh, think about the, like a dust. There is deposition on the transport to the surface of uh, unwanted radioactive material. That is externally contaminated means. So as a result of, you, as you know, the nuclear power plant accident or radiological emergencies at the time, the radioactive material was contaminated though, is outside of the human body. That is external contamination. And this is the last slide of the, this lecture. As you can see, uh, for the protection against uh, the external exposure, I think everybody knows that. However, this figure was really, uh, uh, it is drawn by, by myself anyway. The for the shielding, there is shielding material. The shielding material stop the, the shield to the radiation. So as you can see, if there are no shield, the human could be exposed to whole radiation. However, the material can stop. But the shielding material could be thicker than the, the other thing. It could be more block the radiation. There is a shielding effect. And also, there is distance. Sometimes it's really difficult to explain the concept. However, uh, I think, I hope that it, this could be easy to understand. I, I mean, in the, the specific dimension at the time, the radiation could be reached everywhere. However, the have a wrong distance at the time, the radiation or fluence could be decreased. So each is a specific dimension have just uh, a little bit radiation. And as wrong distance, there are no, the, the probability of the exposure was really decreased. That is the concept of distance. Also this is time, means the every radioactive, radioactive material has their own Radioactive dose rate, so uh, the reducing the time could be the dose rate dose could be reduced. That is the three component of the using shielding, increased distance, and reduced time for the external exposure. Yeah, yeah. This is my this is the end of the, my lecture, and thank you of your attention. Any and lastly, I will have. Uh, do do you have any question to the this lecture? Actually, uh, really sorry to I have so many questions. So, yeah, there are questions. Yeah. Is the depth is the depth or some thickness is not important or it is important? Depth. Yeah, thick thickness. 
Uh, yeah, shared yeah. thing is, is not important or important. Most, the most important thing is the what kind of the material means. I said before I said for the shielding to the gamma ray or something like that at the time for the gamma ray, it the material the shielding material need high electronic el electron density, like a three or sometimes the gold could be better anyway. Yeah, but the other material really low electron density like a uh, polyethylene or something like that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't work to the shielding effect. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, is uh, if there are no questions, yeah, this is finished for the lecture. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Can you remember me? And um, yes, I'm not sure that's that. So I must uh, Kim Ng Sung. I, I yes. Uh, again, so let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm a, my name is Kim Ng Sung. So I'm a senior researcher in Lodo the Risk Assessment Team at NRIM team. So I'm so I'm so happy to be here. But uh, so the so first class uh, is uh, is to me is very very hard for me. Uh, to understand the, the, I think the phys physics, radiation physics is very, very difficult to me. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the radiation biology. So radiation biology has a key uh, role in health risk assessment uh, take together with uh, the epidemiology study. So you know that the uh, epidemiology studies can provide many good information such as the observational data of uh, human disease related to radiation exposure. And uh, it contributes to the con uh, construction of a guideline of uh, radiation protection. So but uh, it has some limits. So epidemic study cannot explain the how radiation induced uh, the physical effect in a body. And it cannot explain the individual radio sensitivity. So radiation biology, yes, biological studies that add very uh, various so stages, the molecule and cell and tissue response, so can give uh, good information uh, to understand the health effect overcoming the these hurdles. Today's contents, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, yes, uh, hopefully these things uh, will be helpful for your works. And uh, the first part of the my contents so, uh, uh, repeated it, uh, from the previous lectures. Yes, yeah, so we will learn the, the uh, basic property of the radiation. So radiation is, uh, in, a, in a word, is radiation is a uh, wave of energy. The radiation ha is, has a wide ra a range of uh, an uh, energy, so with uh, its own the wavelength and the frequency. So I'm focusing on the radiation so with the uh, uh, low wavelength and uh, high frequency. It causes um, uh, ionization of atom and mo molecules, and consequently uh, so induce the cell injury. Yes, so radiation has been exist since the birth of the Earth, and we have been uh, exposed to the radiation since the birth of the human on the Earth. And radiation is everywhere. It comes from the, the space and the terrestrial sources, 
structures such as soil, rocks, and water. And, and it comes from even uh, human body. Yeah, so we can be already exposed to radiation everywhere. Yeah, this part is uh, um, the previous uh, previously explained uh, in the pre previous lecture. So I will skip this. Uh, this slide shows that uh, the clinical symptoms in instantaneous uh, exposure to large amount of radiation. So partial exposure and uh, for whole body exposures. There is no verified clinical symptoms and uh, there is no uh, increased uh, cancer risk uh, of radiation exposure less than 100 millisieverts. So we can detect a uh, reduction of uh, the peripheral blood cells at uh, 500 millisievert exposure. And we can see the nausea and vomiting in 10% of the people uh, from uh, the exposure at one gray and the lethal dose of 50% of people in a month is uh, three to five gray. Partial exposed bodies show that the specific uh, symptoms uh, the depending on the, the radiation exposure dose, uh, such as the uh, opacity of the lens and the hair loss and the acute ulceration. How can radiation induce the, the, these clinical symptoms in the body? Yeah, okay, so let's get into the main body of the, this lecture. The biological effect of radiation occurs depending on the radiation exposure. Oh, sorry. A biological effect of radiation depends on the exposure dose, the time, and the frequency, and the radio sensitivity. The last one is the energy deposition. So in other words, um, the biological effect of radiation will be uh, investigated the direct and indirect effect, early and late, deterministic and stochastic effect, and the linear and the transfer, and relative biological effectiveness. Uh, firstly, I would like to mention the briefly the three types of ionizing radiation. When atoms are decayed into the daughter isotope, uh, three types of ionization can be generated. The first is alpha. The uh, alpha is uh, come from the helium nucleus. It has a large mass particles to charge and the low penetration activity with the high uh, ionizing power. The second is beta. Beta is uh, emitted from the electron. It has small mass, minus one charge, and moderate penetration and ionizing power. The last one is gamma rays. Gamma rays comes from the cotton. Uh, it has no mass and no charge, and but uh, very high penetration activity with low ionizing power. So we can uh, protect ourselves from the radiation exposure depending on the uh, types of radiations with uh, the appropriate materials uh, as you, as Dr. Yu uh, explained that. The, the biological effect uh, can be determined by the uh, radiation energy. Well, so I, when ionizing radiation energy is deposited to the directly target, uh, such as the DNA or proteins, we call it the I, uh, direct action or direct effect of radiation. So it's uh, causing the ionization of the molecules, it causing the damage. Uh, it, it is a dominant process for high energy radiation, such as uh, the neutron and alpha particles. Alternatively, as you know, as the uh, water is the predominant molecules of uh, living organism, about 80% of the mass of the living or uh, uh, living cells uh, uh, is the water. So, a major proportion of the energy that will be observed in the water and causing the excitation and ionizations water. So we call that uh, water radiolysis. So free radicals so, uh, comes from the water radiolysis, such as the hydroxyl, hydroxyl, uh, hydroxyl groups and uh, 
hydrogen atom. So I, I are able to the reach and uh, damage to target DNA or proteins. That means that uh, in terms, um, the radiation is the first interactive with the water and the in terms interactive with the target damage. Uh, this is the predominant process for low energy radiations such as X-ray and gamma radiations. About 70% of volatile effect of radiation so are caused by the indirect action. Um, DNA damage is the primary effect of uh, ionizing radiation exposure. So for example, uh, the single strand break, a double strand break, and the damaged uh, or mismatched base in the DNA backbone, and the intra or, or intra-strand uh, cross-link. Uh, this DNA damage is uh, induced to severe effect of the uh, living organisms like uh, cell death or the accumulation of the mutations uh, inducing the carcinogenesis. But fortunately, the cells have um, multiple enzymatic mechanism for uh, detecting or the, uh, uh, repairing the, these, these kinds of uh, DNA damaging, so, uh, such as the base excision repair, nucleotide excision repair, and mismatch repair, and so on. So these repair systems have a very uh, complicated and uh, s a specific action mechanism responding to their the own uh, DNA damage. Uh, this table shows that the uh, approximate number of uh, the DNA damage, uh, one gray of low dose, uh, um, low energy linear energy transfers. I will uh, explain this uh, later. Uh, it's the one cells. Uh, cells are proliferating uh, ma to maintain all the living of organisms by the cell division cycle, like this. So um, uh, if uh, cells are exposed to the radiation, the DNA, uh, consequently DNA damage occurs, and cells are regulated cell cycles oh, oh, uh, at the various uh, stages with the mm, many cell cycle checkpoint proteins like this. So um, in the nucleus of the cells, we can see the specific, specific structure of the uh, DNA. Uh, we call that the chromosome. Chromosome is consists of the DNA and several proteins forming a thread-like uh, structure. Undefa uh, undepaired DNA damage can be remained in the chromosome, or we call that the chromosomal aberration. The chromosomal aberration is to show the varied, uh, various uh, forms, dicentric and ring, or a small program on top. So the evaluation of radiation-induced chromosomal aberration is the golden standard for the biodosimetry uh, for the radiation exposure, human radiation exposure. Uh, this slide shows that the volatile time scale of radiation expo effect. When cells are exposed to cell, uh, radiations, uh, DNA damage are occurred in s several seconds, and the repair and the cell cycle controls uh, are occurred uh, in uh, several hours. So uh, the de detrimental effect, the volatile effect, damages come from the DNA regions uh, observed uh, in the uh, gut GI tract or nerve or the, the lung. And the infertilities and the cancers are observed a long time later after radiation exposure. So we can uh, simply uh, classify, just uh, very simply, classify the radiation effect, early effect, and the late effect, just uh, simply uh, depending on the occurrence of the symptoms. So early effects are inflammation, edema, hemorrhages, occur uh, in uh, several days or several hours. Or late effects uh, are fibrosis, ulcerations, 
that can be seen in uh, months or years. Definitely, we know we should know that uh, DNA is a key target in the uh, iridase cells. We call that the target theory. The cell, the, uh, they have a target the DNA uh, that wants to hit by radiation, leading cell death. This slide uh, uh, shows the overview of particle response of radiations. The cells are exposed to ionizing radiations. Uh, that the many chemical reactions are occurred in cells, uh, generating the DNA damage and activating the uh, en uh, enzymatic uh, repair. The unrepaired, uh, the mis uh, unrepaired or the misrepaired DNAs influence the cell death cell base, uh, such as the cell death or the mutation. The large, uh, the result of the large number of cell deaths induced uh, the uh, detrimental effect in the uh, tissue and organs, such as the uh, uh, developmental effect or uh, the, the radiation sickness. We call that the deterministic effect. And the others, the uh, mutations, uh, mutant cells uh, caused by the unrepaired or misrepaired DNAs in germ lines. So we, uh, it this is mutant cell is uh, induced the heritable and genetic effect, and uh, the car uh, these cells uh, induced the can carcinogenesis in somatic cells. So we call this is stochastic effect. The harmful effect of radiation may be classified into the two major effects. The first is the, the deterministic and the stochastic effect. The representative deterministic effect is uh, RR, uh, reciality, uh, reciality, organ failure, uh, sterility. Uh, most uh, deterministic effects are occurred in on you know short times after radiation exposure, and as you can see the graph, the deterministic effect has a threshold for the radiation response. So the the probability of it, this effect the one hundred percent for all individuals above threshold minimize zero percent for all individuals below threshold. Uh, its uh, sever severity is, uh, in are is increasing with the, the exposed dose. Uh, stochastic effects uh, such as the cancer and hereditary genetic effects, uh, is, uh, are, uh, 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 we can see in these uh, stochastic effects a uh, long time later after uh, radiation exposure. Stochastic effect has no threshold, so the, the probability is, is increasing with the exposed dose. But, oh, sorry. No, stop. But uh, its uh, severity is not dependent on the exposed dose. <coughs> uh, another factor is to understand the virus effect or the health effect of radiation is the linear energy transfer. So in other words, uh, radiation quality. Uh, once uh, ionizing radiation travels travels uh, through the, the metals, so it uh, loses their uh, their energy gradually uh, with the interaction with the surrounding metals. So we call the linear energy transfers. The the LEP is uh, defined uh, is uh, the density of uh, energy deposition. Uh, this uh, uh, factor, the LEP, is largely determines the particle constant of radiation exposure. So the X-ray, a gamma ray, and electrons are low LEP radiation. It has special ionizing ionizing power, uh, causing the small particle damage, and the alpha particles and neutron heavy ions, the high LEP radiation. So it has a densely ionizing power and causing large uh, particle damage. Usually, uh, the linear energy transfers can be divided. So uh, the standard criteria is 10 kilo electron volt per microsecond. Um, variations 
uh, various uh, radiation have their own values of uh, linear energy transfer. The uh, charged particle radiations have a higher value of uh, LET. So uh, we can um, we can reasonably reasonably uh, imagine the the same dose of radiation. Uh, same dose of radiation, uh, same dose of uh, different type of radiations can induce the different radio response. So, the different uh, so the biological effect of uh, different type of radi radiations characterized by the uh, parameter comparable parameter is the relative biological effectiveness. Relative biological effectiveness uh, defined. Uh, uh, as uh, the ratio of the dose uh, of red, uh, standard radiations to the dose of testing radiation producing the both uh, producing the same biological effect. And comparing different type of radiations, uh, 250 kilovolt per peak of X-rays are used as a standard. The relative biological effective of different kinds of uh, radiation can be expressed in terms of the energy deposition, like this. Yes, uh, historically, 250 kilovolt of X-rays are used uh, as a reference, but uh, more recently, cobalt-60 gamma radiations uh, has become the standard. This slide shows uh, an example of the calculation of the relative biological effectiveness. This graph shows that uh, the same effect of 10% uh, of survivors achieved uh, by two different uh, types of radiation. The, the particle radiation is uh, lower dose uh, required, uh, lower dose radiation. That means the particle more effective than X-ray, the lower dose of a particle radiation is required to cause the same biological effect, 10% of survival. So the relative biological effective values, alpha particles, is 10 to 20. Relative biological effectiveness uh, depends on the many factors, in including the energy particle type, or organ dimensions, the presence of oxygen, or all of things is related to the, the energy deposition of radiation. Uh, we know, or we can know that uh, uh, absolutely the radio sensitivities can influence the, the radiation response of the uh, the human. So uh, the two French scientists performed a series uh, ex uh, performed a series of experiments that evaluated uh, the relative uh, radio sensitivity uh, of uh, rodent germ cells at the the different stage in the spermatogenesis. Some fundamental characters of cell radio sensitivities uh, are uh, established were established at from the these ex ex experiments. The radio sensitivity of cells is proportional to its reproductive capacity and inversely inversely proportional to its degree of the differentiation. So the young and high metabolic undifferentiated cells are more radio sensitive. We can compare the radio uh, relative radio sensitivity uh, between these two cells. So the the stem cell in bone marrow or the intestinal crypt is so very high radio sensitivity. And the fully differentiated red blood cells or muscle cells show the very low radio sensitivity. The biological effect of radiation, whole biological effect, a whole organism effect of radiation can be determined with this kind of uh, cells death. Um, uh, radiation carcinogenesis is a very, very important topic in radiation biology. R uh, carcinogenesis is a stochastic effect of radiation exposed to the somatic cells. Radiation induced carcinogenesis is not much from the the, the other uh, toxicant induced carcinogenesis. 
a carcinogenesis is a, a process of a formation of a cancer. Cancer arises from the uh, cellular transformation by abnormal cell division that can be achieved by um, a complex progress of uh, changes at the cellular and uh, genetic and epigenetic and very, very complex uh, response. Ultimately, the cells, uh, re, uh, uh, cells are, are re reprogrammed and undergo the uncontrolled and infinite the cell division. So thereby the, the forming of the malignant mass. These malignant transformations caused by the, the accumulated DNA damage uh, due to the uh, imper in, uh, imperfect repair uh, radiation exposure has been shown to lead to increase the rate of uh, cancer induction in animal experiment and the human population study. So the high dose radiation of uh, 0 0.5 gray have been linked to the modest increase of the cancer incidence, uh, such as the 30, the, the ABAM survivor. Uh, but uh, at the very low doses below the about 10, uh, what 100 millisievert, the potential for cancer causation is uncertain. Uh, they believe to be quite small. So another the stochastic effect of uh, radiation is the uh, heredity effect. Uh, this is com uh, it is it is uh, uh, observed in the offspring uh, due to the radiation exposure germ cells of parents. We acquired uh, enti almost the entire information of the genetic effect of radiation uh, from the uh, animal experiment. There is no human data research on this heredity effect. Radiation does not produce a unique mutation, but uh, increase the incidence of the same spontaneously occurring the mutations. When a cells or a single cells are exposed to radiation, it has uh, some genetic alteration, and uh, these are can uh, these can be transferred to the offspring uh, through the several uh, cell divisions. Uh, we can see the 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 genetic uh, alterations uh, in the non-exposed uh, offspring. We call that is the heredity effect of radiation. Uh, we looked into the volatile effect of radiation uh, we based on the uh, high dose radiation exposure data. Uh, from now on, so I will expand the range of the volatile response of uh, uh, radiation, including the very low levels, less than 100 millisieverts. So this exposure condition is common in our daily life. So the many uh, the public want also know want to know the uh, health information about the radiation, low dose radiation exposure, uh, health risk exposure information. So we can simply uh, describe the low dose radiation exposures induced the, the, the long time, long term effect and the stochastic effect. And uh, these uh, low dose radiation exposures induce the ambiguous effect uh, less than uh, the 100 millisievert, so the 1 millisievert or uh, 50 millisieverts. But uh, uh, high dose radiation exposures uh, can be induced to unexpected accidents, nuclear power accidents, or the something like that. So the high dose radiation exposures so induce the cell killing in a short times, causing the, the severe damage to tissue and organs. We have a uh, definite dangers. We have the, the, the uh, data, uh, clear data to explain the definite dangers. Uh, a low dose radiation and low dose. What is the low dose radiation? I think low dose is a uh, relatively conservative. For example, uh, ra two radiation oncologists, uh, physicians, one cibot is a very low level of radiation because. They use uh, uh, 50 or 60 gray uh, 
of radiations for the treatment. But the lay people perceive that the one seabird is very uh, uh, scared and hard of level of radiation exposure. How can we define the low dose radiation? Uh, this is a very clear and a uh, very clear uh, 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 epidemiological data, A1 survival data uh, for the relative risk of a solid cancer against uh, the radiation exposure. We have a solid and clear epidemiological evidence that the health risk is uh, getting increased with the uh, radiation exposure um, over 0 0.5 grade. But uh, this, uh, we have no ideas about uh, this, uh, the biological effect of uh, this region. Actually, so we are most interested in what's going on in this region. So, uh, low dose radiations can be defined as a very low level of radiation having no uh, consolidated health risk information. So interestingly, uh, ICRP comments the radiation dose like this, the extremely low, very low, low, moderate, moderately high. So the uh, following the ICRP comments, the low dose radiation is defined as the 10 millisieverts, but uh, unscaled, the low dose radiation is defined as less than 100 millisieverts. 100 millisieverts. So it should be noted that the definition of low dose radiations can be different from the depending on the investigator's uh, experience and the background. The most uh, uh, response of low dose radiation less than 100 millisieverts so, uh, are different, are somewhat different compared to those seen in the high dose radiation exposures. So many scientists uh, suggested that the dif different uh, the low dose radiation showed a different mechanism and action. The newly evidence, newly finding evidence, show that uh, the the low dose radiation, bar, uh, low dose radiation bulk effect is, uh, in uh, reveal the cell communication or the tissue communication is very important in the response. Uh, the classical paradigm of radiation uh, can be sh uh, uh, has been shifted by the new evidence. The new evidence is the multi cells and tissues response and complex dose response and non-targeted effect. So among them, I'm focusing on the non-targeted effect. Uh, um, contrast to the target DNA uh, target theory, the non-targeted radiation effects means that uh, some radiation response can be observed uh, in non-exposed something. The radiation-induced genomic instability, we can see the radiation effect in non-exposed offspring cells. And bystander effect, we can see the uh, radiation response in uh, the non-exposed neighboring cells. Escopar effect is extended version of bystander effect. So we can see the radiation response in neighboring tissues. And the clastogenic factors uh, sort of be the, the signal mediators from the eradicated cell to non-eradicated cells. So I will uh, uh, deeply deal with this uh, ex with uh, the experimental data. Radiation in this genomic instability. Um, so we can see that some genetic effect observed in the offspring so in of eradicated cells or uh, through the over many uh, cycles after eradication. So when cells are exposed to uh, ionizing radiations, some genetic uh, alterations can be transferred uh, through the cell divisions 
and we can see the the some in this uh, radiation induced dynamic uh, alterations in the offspring non exposed these cells are not exposed to radiation the induced genetic alteration in this uh, cells are different from the, the directly irradiated cells so radiation induced genomic instabilities is defined as a with the manifestations as the chromosomal aberrations micron slide on the slide and so on on the slide on the fluid is a chromosomal copy number defect Uh, this is a very complicated to explain these things, the, the experimental data. Uh, the mutation frequencies explain the genomic instability. So this uh, experiment is used uh, the ESTR. The ESTR is expanded simple tendonitis. In other words, uh, some specific genome loci. We can see the many uh, mutations due uh, due to the, the unstable and the high mutation susceptibility. So um, after exposure of uh, parent mice, uh, two kinds of mice, A, C, B, A, A, B, 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 C, and uh, ESTR mutation frequencies of uh, uh, non-exposed uh, offspring mice are uh, investigated. So as uh, you can see the th this result, the red bar uh, is uh, indicated the uh, mutation, uh, increased the mut uh, ESTL mutation frequency of the offspring of the irradiated parent. The blue bar is uh, indicated for the, the mutation frequency, the offspring of a non-irradiated parent. That means that uh, Radiation induced transgenerational genomic alteration. The bystander e and uh, Escopa effect is uh, a remote response of uh, radiation. So we can see the uh, some radiation response uh, in the non-exposed cells. We call that the bystander effect. Then we can see the some the radiation response in uh, in the uh, other tissues far from the irradiated tissues we call that escopar effect that uh, clastogenic factors can medi mediate the radiation signals between cell and to cells or tish uh, tissues uh, this is a quite simple experimental data the DNA damage are investigated with the uh, uh, DNA damage of the irradiated mice are investigated with uh, the shielded mouse. The there, uh, there this area is there is no radiation exposure due to the red shielding. So, so the BS the bystander side, but the this side is uh, exposed to radiation that the irradiated side. The we uh, can compare the DNA damage, the BS and I IR regions. So you can see the, the increase the DNA damage compared to the non irradiated control. That means that the, the irradiated areas can transfer the something. I don't know what is it, but uh, anyway, the radiation responses uh, can be observed uh, in this uh, non exposed area. We call that uh, the bystander effect. Uh, the adaptive response of radiation is uh, unique and the specific of low dose radiation response. So when cells are exposed to a small dose of radiation, we call the condition exposures. The cells uh, show that the adaptive protections uh, against the uh, later is higher or uh, higher dose radiation. We call that the challenge. The, the response of scale of low dose radiation plus high dose radiation uh, is smaller than the single dose, a uh, single irradiation of uh, high dose radiation. Uh, nowadays, uh, 18 studies uh, related to the adaptive protections are worth uh, reanalyzed with uh, the exposed dose. So 
you can see the many uh, evidence that uh, the adapt related adaptive protection after acute irradiations can be appeared in the range of the the radiations uh, to 100 millis or less than 200 millisievert. The by the way, the low dose radiation uh, such as uh, 00 0 0.01 and 0 0.3 grays induce a hyper sensitivity response of cell death. Hypersensitive cell death uh, compared to high dose radiation. We call that the hyper radio sensitivity. And it is a contrast to the, the adaptive response of radiation. Uh, this is an example of the adaptive response. Uh, in the evaluating the cell death and the DNA damage, the treated uh, low dose radiations, here the 0 0.1 grade, uh, decreases the, uh, decreased the, the, the cell death and uh, the DNA, DNA, DNA damage compared to the high dose uh, four gray irradiated samples. Uh, especially the, this response occurred in the physiological condition of oxygen and uh, this is uh, and uh, we know that uh, this response is uh, tightly associated uh, uh, reactive oxygen metabolism because uh, the NAC and acetylcysteine is a kind of uh, antioxidant so this uh, uh, NAC treatments block the adaptive response. The last one, the hermetic effect. Um, the single uh, low dose radiation exposure and this uh, stimulating the pro protection system of a living organisms such as uh, we know that the repairing system, antioxidative system, immune systems. That these uh, 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 systems are not activated without the low dose radiation exposure. In these response, the hermetic effect. The beneficial effect uh, can be caused uh, by the specific dose of a stress uh, less than the specific dose of a stress. Uh, this is my data. Um, the 0 0.2 gray uh, uh, they, uh, 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 activated the innate the immunity of the irradiated uh, fly. So the you can see the increase uh, the survival. That means that increase the resistance to the microbial infection. And the other one is the the 0 0.2 gray irradiations uh, increase uh, the extension of the lifespan of uh, irradiated fly. Uh, this is the last fly. The volatile effect of ionization are mainly classified into the, the stochastic effect and deterministic effect. In addition to the, uh, uh, depending on the occurrence times, early and delayed effect. Uh, it is uh, depending on the radiation dose, quality, and laser sensitivity. The most important, the most important target of DNA. Uh, ta ta target of the uh, radiation exposure is the DNA so following the according to the target theory but uh, nowadays uh, biological response to radiation exposure is very complicated in the presence of the repair or uh, bio defense systems and uh, uh, we found the some complications in cells and tissues Newly evidence for volatile effect of radiation, such as a non-targeted effect that uh, lead to the class uh, paradigm to the, uh, uh, the new paradigm of the radiation response. Uh, currently, there are several radiation risk estimating uh, models. So the linear quadratic models, no threshold models, uh, threshold models, supralinear models. We have a clear evidence for the health risk uh, of radiation exposure of uh, 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 more than so 0 0.5 gray. But the uh, health risk is of radiation, so, so especially below 100 millisievert, is, uh, 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 is not established due to the in 
occurrence and in constants of the experimental data. There is a, is a considerable uncertainty in these regions and biological effect. So to reduce the uncertainties of the biological effect of uh, uh, below the 100 millisieverts, so uh, we uh, have to we have to many uh, we have to collect many biological effect of evidence and uh, the biological mechanistic studies uh, should be performed. Thank you. From now on, we're going to have a break for 30 minutes and we'll convene uh, the second, uh, the next lecture at 11.30.